can we share the screen please i mean uh, slides please so okay so this uh, term may be found to have a bilirubin of 25 at 18 hours of age uh, which of the following is true physiological jaundice is the most likely cause which is uh, wrong because physiological jaundice can never reach a level of 25 in uh, less than one day in fact any uh, jaundice uh, clinically obvious within the first 24 hours is pathological and never physiological so that is the point so any jaundice clinically detected within the first 24 hours is pathological and not physiological so a option a is not correct and uh, an urgent conjugated bilirubin level is indicated again wrong because conjugated bilirubin takes time for uh, building up so it will never reach uh, such levels in uh, 24 hours conjugated hyperbilirubinemia usually we say in say second week third week fourth week not really in the uh, first uh, week even <clears throat> so it is uh, like unlikely to be due to hemolysis that is wrong because the commonest pathological reason for uh, uh, physiological jaundice uh, uh, commonest pathological reason for jaundice within 24 hours is hemolysis so it is likely to be hemolysis and uh, the in, uh, the infant's blood group and combs test are the most important investigation correct because uh, because hemolysis is uh, uh, the likely cause we have to do the combs test combs test there are two types of combs test that you may be aware of there is direct combs test which we do in case of uh, babies rbc to know whether the rbc is coated with uh, antibody or not and indirect combs test we do it in mother's serum uh, to know mother's plasma to know whether antibodies are there in the mother's serum so indirect combs test we generally do in the antenatal period to know whether the mother is already sensitized and direct combs test we do after the uh, delivery on, on the infant to know whether the uh, rbcs are already sensitized if i am not clear you can uh, always ask me and there is a definite indication of double surface phototherapy in this case so uh, the last option is not correct next next slide okay term baby born of, actually i'll be um, um, more concentrating on newborn because that is something that you will not get uh, from say medicine or so so um mostly i'll be concentrating on newborn a uh, term baby born out of uh, normal vaginal delivery presents with cyanosis on the second day the x ray and the echo are not suggestive of any structural uh, heart disease abg shows hypoxia the most probable diagnosis so the thing is uh, uh, it is a term baby one point second is a vaginal delivery and third cyanosis on the second day and the echocardiogram is showing no structural heart disease so naturally it cannot be congenital heart disease hyaline membrane disease is a disease of prematurity and not in a term baby so that is also out and the last one the transient tachypnea of newborn <coughs> as the name indicates is a transient thing and uh, usually settles in a day and uh, so on the second day it is very unlikely and it is very unlikely that the child was okay on the first day and transient tachypnea Uh, starts on the second day is totally unlikely so the only diagnosis persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn which means that uh, in intrauterine life your lung is all collapsed so all the uh, vessels are all constricted hardly any blood supply there some less than 10% of the um, um, blood circulation goes through uh, lung and uh, in during after birth because of oxygen the pulmonary vasodilatation should occur and in this particular child that has not occurred so uh, the pulmonary hypertension which is physiological in fetal life is persisting after birth so um, there is not enough blood that is going into the pulmonary circulation for oxygenation so the child remains uh, cyanosed so the answer is ppsn persistent pulmonary hypertension next regarding physiological anemia of infancy the following is are true except physiological anemia means in the first 6 uh, uh, to 8 weeks 
normally also your your hemoglobin drops that is basically because there is a decrease in level of erythropoietin because the newborn is born with a very high hemoglobin like 18 20 so whatever erythropoietin is there is get suppressed uh, second uh, the fetal rbcs have got a short life span as compared to adult adult um, you may have 120 days and the fetal may have only about 90 days and there is a rapid volume expansion postnatally so that actually dilutes your uh, um, hemoglobin so uh, these are all the reasons for these are all the reasons for physiological anemia of inf- infants and it can be treated with iron is wrong because if if you give iron you need erythropoietin for the uh, uh, erythropoiesis so as long as erythropoietin is not there it cannot be treated with iron so iron is not the treatment for physiological anemia of infant next <coughs> epstein pearls are seen in uh, uh, this is actually epstein pearl is a normal thing a epithelial uh, uh, accumulation in the hard palate in the midline that is seen normally uh, in newborns so uh, all the other uh, things are wrong so this is a normal phenomenon the other normal phenomenon that you know of is for example uh, mongolian spot in the back so that uh, slate gray color discoloration that remains for a few months up to about a year and then disappears on its own and then subconjunctival hemorrhage basically because the stress of delivery and that goes off in about uh, one or two weeks uh, then uh, yeah next slide <coughs> new born of diabetic mother faces all the following complications with increased frequency except um, actually uh, diabetic mother has got high uh, d d is correct the answer d is correct that is basically because the uh, mother has got hyperglycemia because of diabetes so that blood glucose gets transferred to baby's uh, blood, uh, circulation so much so baby secretes lot of insulin so immediately after birth the cord is clamped so supply from mother is over so uh, lot of extra insulin is there and that produces hypoglycemia all the other things are possible uh, cardiovascular defects are uh, very common in uh, uh, diabetic mother's child polycythemia uh, hyperbilirubinemia basically because of polycythemia you have a lot of uh, lot more of uh, rbc is getting destroyed and so hyperbilirubinemia and hypocalcemia all these hypocalcemia basically because of the parathyroid imma- immaturity because the baby is quite big so actually although the baby size is very big the baby is slightly preterm as compared to the size size of the baby so all these things uh, like hypocalcemia uh, etc can occur next <coughs> newborn with hepatosplenomegaly choreoretinitis pneumonia petechial rash microcephaly has got ct evidence of periventricular calcification what is the most probable diagnosis uh, the answer given is correct because periventricular calcification is uh, cytomegalovirus uh, and um, all the other, others herpes simplex actually um, you do not get immediately after birth because um, uh, at least part of the herpes simplex you get when you are passing through the birth canal uh, so that is generally a late thing and um, rubella basically is uh, we call it as chd cataract heart disease and deafness that is a combination in uh, rubella not uh, calcification toxoplasm is, uh, actually produces calcification but it is a diffuse calcification not periventricular next unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia in the newborn is caused by all except uh, any answers okay uh, gilbert syndrome is basically because you cannot transport uh, Uh, unconjugated bilirubin uh, into the uh, cells so the co- unconjugated bilirubin is high in gilbert and in dubin johnson actually from cell it cannot uh, come out so that is again uh, 
conjugated, not re, because after conjugation, after conjugation, it cannot come out. Breast milk jaundice is basically because of some inhibitors of conjugation in breast milk of some mothers. There, that could be free fatty acid, pregnenolin, dione, etc. Uh, Uh, spherocytosis basically produces hemolysis so unconjugated galactosemia basically produces sort of uh, hepatitis so it is like any other hepatitis that you see in a bigger sac so it causes uh, uh, cellular uh, swelling or inflammation and that blocks the uh, flow of the bile and uh, the conjugated bile cannot flow freely next which of the following reflexes are not present in full term newborn at birth any answers actually parachute reflex is something uh, for example suppose you uh, tend to fall down you spread out your uh, hands and legs so that is the so called parachute reflex so that is something that happens or uh, gets acquired uh, around about 9 months of age moro reflex is present at birth and disappears by 3 months moro reflex another uh, question that can come is uh, causes of uh, unilateral absence of moro reflex the answer could be like uh, herpes palsy or clavicular fracture humerus fracture etc or um, uh, moro reflex that is partial the commonest reason is you are very preterm for example if you are uh, uh, around about uh, 30 weeks uh, the moro may not be complete the other thing is you are sick any sickness in the baby will uh, cause moro to disappear or become partial tonic neck reflex is a reflex where uh, for example if you turn head to one side the uh, hands or the uh, upper limb on that side uh, goes into a fencing position uh, that is uh, immediately after birth you may not see but it is a very prominent position in 2 uh, to 4 months of age so after a few weeks couple of weeks it uh, becomes active <coughs> and uh, um it is a normal phenomenon but uh, if it is persisting beyond 4 months it is abnormal and second thing is an obligatory uh, tonic neck reflex is also abnormal what is obligatory that means um, if you turn the head to one side uh, the hand uh, upper limb goes to a fencing position and after some time it comes back to normal uh, even if your your head is turned to that side but if the uh, arms remain in fencing position as long as the head is uh, turned to that side that is called obligatory tonic neck reflex that is always abnormal at whatever age let it be grasp reflex is uh, uh, act, uh, there are two things one is grasp reflex and the other one is the active grasp when the active grasp starts the reflex disappears and uh, rooting is something uh, uh, something is touching your uh, your cheek you turn towards that uh, uh, looking for the breast so that is called rooting reflex next regarding cephal hematoma all are correct except uh, let me see okay uh, it it is sharp it is basically uh uh that answer is not right okay uh regarding cephalhematoma cephalhematoma what you have to understand is uh it is a bleeding within the periosteum which means it will be limited by the borders of that bone so it is sharply delineated by the uh, particular skull bone margin so that is correct uh it is present at birth is not correct because it is a subperiosteal bleed subperiosteal bleed whatever bleed that is occurring in the subperiosteum it takes time for the uh, bleed to bring uh, to to have the enough pressure enough blood and enough pressure to elevate the periosteum so it actually uh, becomes apparent a few hours or maybe the next day of birth not really immediately after birth what is uh, seen immediately after birth is called uh, caput succedaneum that is a soft tissue swelling basically because you are coming out through the birth canal and uh, uh, because of that uh, um, this uh, cap succedaneum the cap put succedaneum is basically a soft tissue swelling whereas cephal hematoma uh, actually feels cystic because whatever is inside this uh, cephal hematoma is blood and the periosteum is so much stretched out that it looks like a balloon 
uh, it, so you can uh, elicit the uh, uh, fluid feel uh, it may be present in normally delivered babies that is correct and it is usually in the uh, parietal bone because uh, if you remember your uh, obstetrics uh, the the uh, um, the the turning or oh, I, do, i don't know what the technical term is uh, the turn of the uh, scalp uh, makes it uh, that the uh, parietal part uh, comes there to be delivered next meconium contains all except okay uh, meconium contains whatever is normally present in the uh, babies so lanugo hair will be there and uh, epithelial uh, will be there basically because uh, it is there in the uh, uh, intestine and bilirubin uh, it is a very uh, sort of concentrated bilirubin that gives it the color of uh, uh, that uh, greenish color is given Uh, because of a bilirubin content and uh, normal bacteria flora actually uh, the fetus has got a sterile uh, flora and they acquire flo- flora right from the time of uh, passing through the uh, birth canal so um, no there is nothing called normal bacteria flora for a fetus next mediastinal widening in x-ray of the newborn is most likely to be due to um actually all these things will cause mediastinal widening only thing is <clears throat> uh leukemia tuberculosis and lymphoma in newborn period is unlikely and hence thymus becomes choice so all these things will cause mediastinal widening <coughs> next CCF, uh, congestive cardiac failure. Nowadays, we call it simply cardiac failure. Uh, in a uh, in neonate causes all except. Um, feeding difficulty is basically effort intolerance. Effort uh, of a newborn is feeding. Uh, pedal edema, enlargement of liver will be there because uh, all the blood that is going into the uh, heart is not being pumped. So, there is backlog. So, liver will enlarge uh, normally the heart rate and respiratory rate will in- increase because uh, uh, the heart is pumping more number of times because it is failing to failing heart will be trying to uh, maintain the circulation by increasing the heart rate and the increased respiratory rate basically because the uh, blood is uh, sort of stagnating in the lung lung becomes heavy so it is difficult for the a uh, baby to breathe so um depth becomes depth of breathing becomes less and so th- that is compensated by increased weight so as somebody correctly said the answer here is pedal edema because a child is never upright to have a, a pedal edema so edema if at all is there it will be at the back next cyanosis in a newborn may indicate what actually cyanosis in a newborn can indicate all these things any of these things so it is uh, don't go with the uh, impression that only cyanotic heart disease and res- respiratory can cause cyanosis suppose he becomes hypoglycemic again he becomes cyanosis sepsis he becomes cyanosis so any um, uh, of these insults you become cyanosis and polycythemia you are all the more likely to be- become cyanosis because the uh, reduced hemoglobin level will be very high because the hemoglobin itself is high next which of the following need be surgically corrected early in newborn period um dual atresia anal atresia meningomyelocele and congenital heart disease any uh, choice uh b okay i'll accept b uh, actually both are correct dual atresia must be corrected as soon as possible and anal atresia must be corrected as soon as possible meningomyelocele we can wait and congenital heart disease definitely you can wait for maybe months duodenal at- between duodenal atresia and anal atresia anal atresia is very very common as compared to duodenal atresia so in addition um the, the when the meconium is not passed you will detect anal atresia earlier than duodenal atresia so 
Uh, in uh, usual practice, it is the anal letricia uh, that is corrected earlier than duodenal letricia. Both answers are correct, but when uh, both choices are there, you have to either go for the commoner thing, where anal letricia is commoner, or earlier presentation, because earlier presentation will get corrected early. So, in both these ways, anal letricia uh, becomes a choice. Uh, as compared to dual letters. Actually, both answers are correct, but uh, when the two answers are correct, then you will have to uh, choose one among them, which is more appropriate. Okay, next. Neonatal necrotizing endocolitis causes all except. Any answers? Uh, abdominal distension, uh, increased bowel sounds, uh, metabolic acidosis, and <clears throat> pneumoperitone. Okay, uh, actually, necrotizing endocolitis uh, is a situation where you are, um, uh, you are a preterm baby and you have some insult. Some insult means uh, some hypoxia, for example. Then what happens? All the blood from the uh, less vital organ will be diverted to vital organ. So blood will be diverted from kidney to brain or heart, and then uh, from intestine it will be di diverted. So... It is a uh, sort of a hypoxic and ischemic uh, bowel. So there may be breaks in the uh, uh, mucosa. So whatever uh, uh, organisms are there within the intestinal lumen has now got a chance to get into the wall of the intestine. So that is how it happens. So the uh, intestine will stop moving much. So uh, B is, B cannot be correct because the bowel sounds will be decreased because decreased bowel movement. Abdominal distance will be there. Any sick child will have metabolic acidosis and this is an infection of the intestinal wall. So, and, uh, so naturally, uh, it is a sepsis. So you can have uh, metabolic acidosis. And uh, since the organ, the usual organism is anaerobic, you know, from the intestinal lumen. So that is entering into the intestinal wall. So what does it produce? It produces gas. So you get what is called nematosis intestinalis, which means in the intestinal wall, you have gas. And suppose it uh, uh, breaks <coughs> and release gas to the peritoneum, then it becomes pneumoperitoneum, which is a complication of NEC. Okay, next. A polycythemic. Uh, all question. Excuse me, uh, can you go to the previous slide? Okay. Uh, here, increased bowel sound is wrong. You have to have decreased bowel sound or absent bowel sound. Am I clear to the uh, question in the chat box? Okay, next. Uh, polycythemic infant is seen to have hematuria, thrombocytopenia, flank mass, diagnosis. So, uh, the thing is, uh, yeah, uh, the answers are coming as A, but the point is uh, we have to uh, read the question carefully. Uh, it is given polycythemic infant. Anybody who is Polycythemic means your uh, circulation has become very viscous and it will get stuck somewhere. <clears throat> so uh, here, as compared to Wilf's tumor, renal vein thrombosis is more likely because it is a polycythemic child. So circulation is sluggish and uh, you can get a thrombosis in the renal vein. And once there is thrombosis in the renal vein, there is renomegaly. And then you will have hematuria. Because there is thrombosis, the, uh, the platelets are con consumed in the form formation of thrombus. So there is thrombocytopenia. And because the uh, kidney uh, increases in size, there is a flank mass. So here the diagnosis, renal vein thrombosis. <coughs> renal vein thrombosis in a bigger child, uh, usually we see in, uh, for example, nephrotic syndrome, the severe dehydration, etc. Okay, next. Floppy infant may be due to all except. Uh, any 
any answers <coughs> okay this is a common question that comes uh werni hoffman disease is uh, where you do, uh, your anti horn cell is gone so that means you become totally hypotonic like a polio myopathy means uh, muscle disease um naturally hypotonic a septic child will be flat so hypotonia now edward syndrome is one and possibly the only uh, uh, trisomy where the tone is increased all the trisomies you can kan kan adachu parayam hypotonia whether it is downs or pattau or whatever it is but edward is one exception where you have hypertonia and in fact neck retraction other features of edward would be like uh, uh, microcephaly uh, overriding of uh, digits and another thing that they ask in uh, mcq is rocker bottom feet is seen in that is again Ad- edward syndrome next drugs used in the treatment of apnea of prematurity is all except all except any uh, choices theophylline doxapram caffeine oxygen cpap uh, actually uh, theophylline is uh, uh, aminophylline is the uh, drug that is most commonly used doxapram is a very good drug but uh, because of the availability problem you may not have seen it being used but it is a very good drug for and uh, caffeine is uh, the drug that we are now routinely using oxygen is actually uh, i have saw many choices are d uh, oxygen is actually considered as a drug and oxygen obviously will have to be given for apnea of prematurity <coughs> cpap of course will be given for apnea of prematurity but cpap is not considered a drug so there since the question is drugs used for we our choice of answer is uh, cpap because oxygen is uh, considered as a drug next next failure to pass meconium may be due to all except uh, cystic fibrosis uh, where you for example meconium ileus is something that is characteristic of cystic fibrosis so you do not uh, pass meconium head spring disease yes basically because you know the absence of neurons there so constipation imperforateness yes and poor feeding yes meconium is not contributed by feeding you are born with meconium so whether you feed or not meconium must be passed okay so d is the answer next vitamin k deficiency is least likely in <clears throat> biliary atresia biliary atresia what happens is bile is not coming out because of the block in the biliary uh, tract so bile is needed for uh, fat soluble vitamin absorption so you will have uh, <coughs> uh, you will have uh, vitamin k deficiency uh, i have seen a choice breastfeeding breastfeeding is very good for many 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 things but not for vitamin k vitamin k is uh, extremely low in breast milk and that is why Uh, you may you may have noticed that uh, immediately after birth we routinely give vitamin k injection to all the babies if you recollect your uh, obstetric posting and antibiotic treatment uh, prolonged antibiotic treatment always causes uh, a replacement of the bowel flora so your vitamin k is contributed by uh, bowel flora so naturally you will <coughs> have vitamin k deficiency so cow's milk is reasonably good in vitamin k so of these choices uh, vitamin k uh, uh, i mean cow's milk feeding is least likely to cause vitamin k deficiency next the first deciduous teeth to appear is uh, which one any <coughs> any choice correct a if you remember these advertisements if you visualize that advertisement you will see very small baby with uh, two a lower incisors there smiling so if you visualize that uh, then it will be uh, no issue and molar is the first teeth uh, to uh, erupt in case of permanent dentition not in the deciduous next uh 
then uh, development actually you will have to read uh, uh, with the emphasis on developmental milestones sexual maturation smr also you must uh, concentrate and anthropometry <coughs> then the key topics in uh, nutrition would be um, pm recommended daily allowance of vitamins then hypervitaminosis inc- including vitamin d and vitamin a then vitamin uh, and micronutrient deficiency disorders and uh, um, daily requirement of protein and energy in a child and uh, active adult etc so that you just look up <coughs> next uh in disorder of uh, mucopolysaccharidosis all condition is it in disorder of uh, mucopolysaccharidosis all condition follows autosomal recessive pattern except okay yes uh, hunter syndrome is uh, 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 hunter syndrome is x linked so it is easy to uh, memorize see uh, all the hunters uh, historically are all males no so it uh, manifests only in males which means it is x linked another thing is all the hunters will have to have a good eye sight so in mucopolysaccharidosis for example hairless there will be corneal opacity corneal opacity is the uh, um, uh, is there in most of the uh, mucopol mps but not in hunters so these two are not there in hunters that you should note uh, hunters are uh, having a good vision and they are males if you remember that you will not go wrong there next all the following levels of uh, all the following levels of amino acids are increased in uh, maple syrup urine disease except uh, any queries uh yes yes correct uh, the thing is Uh, all these things are uh, um, branch chain amino acids leucine isoleucine and valine methionine is the odd uh, amino acid out so methionine is the answer next next deafness is seen in all except penrod syndrome basically is uh, deafness and goiter <coughs> alport syndrome is uh, deafness and uh, nephritis uh kernicterus uh, produces uh, deafness uh extra pyramidal type of uh, cerebral palsy <coughs> and uh, uh, discolored tooth up up gaze palsy etc so marfan of course uh, doesn't cause deafness uh congenital cmv infection is possibly the commonest cause of uh, deafness in say for example in infants marfan syndrome uh basically uh in um, entrance they uh, ask about the lens dislocation uh marfan the lens is dislocated laterally outward and in uh, homocystinuria it is nasally nasally uh, or rather medially dislocated homocystinuria is uh, also uh, uh homocystinuria is also uh, a condition where you have uh, um, uh, tall stature but uh, compared to marfan you will have mental retardation and uh, lens dislo- dislocation is medial so that is again easier to remember no uh um homocystin urea you 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 uh, uh, remember it as urine so it is something like that is uh, uh going medially and uh, um marfan has got a long arm so um imagine it as going outward because the arms are going outward so that way you can imagine and so you will not uh, uh go wrong with that and kernicterus uh, basically <coughs> uh the uh bilirubin 
gets deposited in definite areas of predilection and that is why you have a um, extra pyramidal involvement you have hearing loss it is not getting uh, deposited in other areas only in areas of predilection next next the following are true in syndrome of inappropriate adh secretion inappropriate adh secretion mean lot of extra adh is getting secreted that usually happens in for example head trauma etc <coughs> so what is inappropriate is uh, d yes correct because the even the name tells you that it is anti diuretic hormone so it is preventing diuresis so you cannot have high volume urine the urine volume will come uh, will be low so once the urine volume is low it will become high colored and hyper osmolar so urine osmolality will be high but um, whatever is destined to come as urine is now remaining within the vascular system which means in within the vascular system the serum osmolality gets diluted so it becomes low the sodium gets diluted so it becomes hyponatremia next <coughs> growth hormone secretion is increased in all except uh any answers the growth hormone you test in the morning so if you uh, during house agency if you recollect it is always tested in the morning so that means uh, be, uh, during sleep the growth hormone secretion increases and that is why you test in the morning second thing is hypoglycemia again induces an increase in uh, growth hormone uh, for example uh, again you just uh, imagine that uh, uh, it is done in the morning so in the morning sleep is there and then you have not been eating for uh, some 8 to 10 hours so that also is actually uh, increasing the uh, secretion of growth hormone um, so we uh, the growth hormone actually is a very expensive therapy so we want to make sure that the deficiency is true so uh, even if uh, the uh, uh, growth hormone estimation is normal we stimulate and then uh, do estimation and clonidine is one thing that we used to stimulate the secretion of growth hormone and another thing that we use is insulin insulin will produce hypoglycemia and naturally your growth hormone will go up insulin igf2 is insulin like growth factor uh, which actually is uh, 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 through which uh, the the growth hormone uh, elicits its effect uh, igf2 is basically in uh, um, maybe in intrauterine life or early infancy uh, igf1 is in uh, adults and bigger children so uh, you can just say it as igf you need not uh, have that two there next Uh, uh what is the answer okay uh, go to the previous slide please okay ig growth hormone secretion is not increased by igf2 is it very clear igf2 is uh, you cannot give igf2 and increase the growth hormone secretion you can make the child sleep and increase the growth hormone secretion you can induce hypoglycemia and increase the growth hormone secretion you can give clonidine and increase the growth hormone secretion but you cannot give igf and increase the growth hormone secretion am i clear next <coughs> regarding down syndrome all are true except um, uh, actually coactation of iota is uh, seen in uh, turner syndrome not down syndrome and uh, Uh, premature alzheimer disease is well known uh, the alzheim premature alzheimer is uh, uh, well known with uh, uh, down and cataract although we do not detect cataract cataract is extremely common in down syndrome then why we are not detecting is basically it is more in the lateral position not in the visual axis so vision is not much impaired although there may be cataract atlanta axial dislocation extremely common and that's why contact sports should not be encouraged in down duodenal atresia one of the one in fact it is the other way around also is correct 
the the moment you see dual electric you must look for down it may be a um, down that is uh, not showing the typical features so uh, coactation of iotide and <coughs> next x linked disorders are all except um huntington's chorea is a autosomal dominant uh, thing uh all the others are x linked xpd is x linked hemophilia is x linked and okay next actually you must uh, uh, look up a few uh, uh, genetic uh, uh, link i mean uh, inheritance especially x linked ones two year old child presents with high grade fever with coryza on the third day uh, a rash appears which is macular purple and develops and the fever comes down with it the child remained uh, playful and okay okay uh, uh, see this is very typical of uh, exanthem subitum uh, that is you have a high fever even febrile fit in the first three days and even the anti fondrenal may be bulgy but on third day the rash appears the moment rash appears the child is happy playing around no fever uh, in measles what happens is uh, the moment uh, the rash appears fever goes up so extremely high fever with rash so that is measles measles you diagnose by the so called the three c's coryza conjunctivitis and cough in a child with rash and fever so that is the uh, pentad of uh, measles and uh, measles uh, uh, along with rash the fever should go up so a fever coming down with uh, uh, rash is not compatible with either measles or rubella the difference between uh, measles and rubella is rubella is a milder disease uh, but you still have fever while you have the rash in addition in rubella you all know you will have uh, arthritis you can have post auricular lymphadenopathy etc now erythema infectiosum is uh, something that causes uh, slap face appearance due to parvovirus next the clinical sign that appears last in measles is the <coughs> clinical sign that appears last in measles is rash uh because all the others comes before that no uh, the answer cough athera is given is not correct because uh, as i said in the previous slide uh, three c's cough coryza and conjunctivitis comes first uh, in a child with fever and then comes the coplic spot so actually i am sure you uh, none of you may have seen coplic spot you know the reason why because by the time the rash appears coplic spot already disappear so it is such an early thing that unless uh, uh, the moment uh, you diagnose it as measles the coplic spot is no not there so in a child with uh, three c's if you look uh, in the mouth you may find coplic but not in a child with rash so rash is the uh, uh, last thing that appears in case of me next <coughs> next slide please scalded skin skin syndrome is due to uh, any answers uh, is correct uh, scalded skin syndrome is due to erythrogenic uh, toxin of uh, Uh, staphylococcal infection riboflavin deficiency causes uh, angular stomatitis not scalded mercury poisoning actually causes the so called pink disease you are all pink and hot uh, but uh, you do not uh, have this uh, uh, peeling and uh, uh, um, uh, that you see in uh, um, scalded skin skin deficiency what it causes is called uh, uh, <coughs> acrodermatitis enteropathica where you have diarrhea you have perianal excoriation you have 
acral dermatitis that is extremities you have dermatitis next a child with again barry syndrome develops paralysis of the deltoid what immediate complication must be anticipated um um basically uh, deltoid uh, deltoid means uh, c5 so if c5 is involved uh, naturally your diaphragm is going to uh, get paralyzed very soon so diaphragmatic palsy is something that you will have to anticipate Uh, encephalopathy is not there in gillen barry actually gillen barry is a peripheral nerve uh, <coughs> uh, or the not a cns thing so encephalopathy if it occurs is basically because of the diaphragmatic paralysis hypoxia and encephalopathy not really because of uh, gillen barry uh, per se okay uh, retention of bladder bladder in gillen barry is uh, the so called motor paralytic bladder where uh, you have the sensation of full bladder but you cannot initiate the contracts because uh, like other uh, para- you cannot uh, lift your leg something like that it is a motor paralysis of the bladder so you cannot actually initiate the <coughs> uh, micturition process so that is called motor paralysis it is an element bladder but motor paralytic bladder Uh, loss of uh, temperature uh, no again very that doesn't have uh, sensory although you can have a subjective sensory uh, in the earlier uh, or the initial parts next otherwise it is a pure motor the game very next next slide uh hypotonia is seen in early infancy in all except <coughs> any answer <coughs> yeah the thing is a duchenne muscular uh, dystrophy that child uh, in early infancy appears absolutely normal you will not detect uh, the child to be abnormal and uh, when the child uh, starts walking say around around even then he will appear normal so then only uh, it manifests uh, glycogen storage disease can have hypotonia especially the the von gierke and all uh, werner hofmann we have already said it is an anti horn cell disease so naturally it will be hypotonic cerebral palsy is a hypertonia but uh, cerebral palsy in early infancy can be hypotonic basically because hypertonia in uh, cerebral palsy is because of the pyramidal tract so pyramidal tract um, uh, maturation in many infants may not be uh, uh, adequate uh, in the early infancy so cerebral palsy has got the so called uh, period of evolution you becomes you remain hypotonic for a, say maybe a couple of weeks then uh, you become dystonic and then become hypertonic so uh, although uh, cerebral palsy is not a hypotonic disease uh, from these choices in an early infancy early infancy hypotonia from these choice uh, cerebral palsy is the only thing that fit in uh, which is hypo- hypotonia is seen in early infancy in all except cerebral palsy ala so not cerebral palsy in duchin muscular dystrophy yes duchin muscular correct i uh, because uh, cerebral palsy uh, in the early infancy can remain hypotonic can okay next then you may be wondering uh, how will you know whether it is uh, cerebral palsy or a lmn even when hypotonic you will have a uh, increased reflex and the upgoing plantar so it is it will not be confused with uh, lmn even during the hypotonic stage of cerebral palsy okay now coming to the next question regarding herpes simplex encephalitis all are to accept <coughs> okay correct b is cor- uh, the wrong thing because uh, polymorphonuclear lymphocytosis in csf is found in bacterial meningitis not in viral 
ഫോക്കൽ എൻസെഫലൈറ്റിസ് ഇസ് വെരി ടിപ്പിക്കൽ ഓഫ് ഹെർപ്പ് സിംപ്ലക്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ടെമ്പറൽ ലോ so you will have uh, all these hallucinations and things like that and plus uh, periodic lateralized epileptic form discharges that is the eeg finding of uh, herpes simplex <coughs> periodic lateralized lateralized basically because it is a temporal lobe periodic lateralized epileptic form discharge next seizure may occur with deficiency of all except uh, glucose potassium okay uh, glucose deficiency means uh, hypoglycemia it will produce seizure potassium deficiency means hypokalemia it will produce uh, hypotonia and uh, it is not seizure pyridoxin deficiency can produce seizure and that's why in uh, seizures we uh, give a trial of pyridoxin injection and calcium deficiency can produce tetany so that is another uh, sort of seizure uh, that presents a seizure in newborn <coughs> now uh, say so next question is cerebellar lesion is characterized by all except dyssynergia intention tremor normal muscle power position any any <coughs> any answer to that um, actually Uh, cerebellar lesion uh, dyssynergia intention tremor are characteristic of cerebellar lesion uh, muscle tone will be normal in cerebellar lesion uh, with a uh, covid saying that uh, at, because of ataxia you may uh, or because of the uh, 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 tremor intention tremor you may feel the uh, power is not uh, good enough but actually the power is normal uh, the uh, what is the last two ah position sense position sense is a uh, property of posterior column not cerebellum okay so that is the answer next complete third nerve palsy results in Uh, because uh, um, th- when third nerve is paralyzed the sixth nerve can act without uh, third nerve opposition so the um, uh, your eye goes laterally divergent squint pupil will be dilated in third nerve palsy corneal reflex uh, actually corneal reflex the afferent is uh, fifth nerve and the efferent is uh, facial now you close the eye because in facial palsy if you remember uh, there will be inability to close the eye <coughs> so as far as corneal reflex is concerned the efferent is uh, trigeminal and efferent is um, facial so that is uh, that has got nothing to do with third nerve palsy and uh, decrease sweating you find in uh, horner syndrome where the sympathetics are involved not really in this mm, uh, pure third nerve pole so divergent squint is the answer next next slide <coughs> in a child with febrile seizure all the following are associated with bad prognosis except seizure lasting for more than 1 hour uh all the uh, associated with bad prognosis except okay uh the prolonged seizure is a bad prognosis recurrent seizure again bad prognosis uh family history yes uh, you can it can be the uh, initial manifestation of epilepsy eeg actually can remain abnormal even up to about one or two weeks because once you that is called kindling effect kindling effect so it is like uh, suppose you you got angry and uh, uh, produced that tantrum uh, for a, a few uh, hours you will still remain in a uh, uh, sort of uh, baseline anger and uh, any small uh, stimulus will um, initiate your next tantrum similarly after the seizure the the the, the, the neurons are uh, and not completely repolarized they 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 are 
in the uh, process of uh, ready to give another seizure in case of a trigger so there will be eeg uh, uh, features of uh, discharges so um, for a, so that way the other thing is in a febrile fit patient don't take eeg uh, on the on the day of seizure or the next day or the next day so you postpone it maybe after a week or a two weeks next <clears throat> the commonest congenital heart disease in an adult here yeah. <clears throat> any answers yes correct uh, in adult age is the commonest because um, uh, untreated coax uh, pd etc will either be detected in the uh, uh childhood or uh, uh, corrected in childhood coactation can be detected in adult but coactation as compared to asd is very rare vsd as compared to asd is actually uh, rare <coughs> vsd is rarer than asd and most of the vsds will be detected in the childhood so an adult uh, coming uh, with a congenital heart disease the most likely thing is asd next <coughs> basically because asd is the uh, commonest thing as compared to all the other heart diseases <coughs> the risk of uh, sibling getting chd if the child has chd is um that is very uh, easy for you to recollect you have seen so many uh, congenital heart diseases how many siblings had uh, congenital heart disease you just uh, rewind and think almost nobody there will be only one uh, child in the family with chd so which means it is very rare it's less than 5% uh so it really doesn't run in families okay next which chromosomal disorder is associated with coax that i think everybody will be knowing turner uh, patau syndrome is associated with uh, complex heart diseases uh, vsd and uh, other complex heart diseases because patau patau is uh, 13 trisomy <coughs> where uh, you have lot of midline defects like uh, uh, eyes are closed together you have uh, cleft and even uh, your brain has got uh, midline defect so patau generally do not uh, survive also down syndrome has got vsd and av canal defect as the commonest thing and kleine uh, felter kleine felter is basically uh, excess y uh, tall stature gynecomastia at Uh, small testes and uh, infertility and so on next slide the following lesion is not duct see what do you mean by duct dependent duct dependent means suppose the duct closes you die uh, so uh, a duct will have to be open for you to survive so that is called a duct dependent lesion so what are the ductus so uh, what will be a duct dependent lesion you need blood supply to the lung you need blood supply uh, to the uh, systemic circulation so suppose there is uh, systemic circulation is cut off then you need uh, pda to uh, uh, feed the systemic circulation suppose um, um, the pulmonary circulation is cut off again you need so uh, severe pulmonary atresia or severe uh, aortic atresia will require pda to be patent uh, so severe aortic atresia is uh, either severe aortic stenosis or severe coagulation of aorta or the so called hypoplastic left heart syndrome which means the left side of heart is hypoplastic so it cannot pump uh, so naturally the pumping should uh, come from right ventricle to the lung and through pda the systemic circulation should be supported tapvc is total anomalous pulmonary venous connection uh, that is actually an admixture lesion the venous and arterial blood mixed together 
So there, lactose is not needed. Next. Newborn with, um, uh, what is it? Newborn with, uh, both congenital heart failure and uh, cyanosis may be having what? A is wrong because that is a very important thing. Tetralogy of fallow will never, never, never have cardiac failure. <coughs> um, because uh, the VSD is very big and uh, it allows free mixing. And uh, so there is no need for the pulmonary stenosis to produce right heart failure. Because as the right ventricle contracts, the blood will go to the left ventricle through the uh, VSD. So the heart doesn't fail. So TOF, no heart failure. Uh, pulmonary atresia is something like TOF only. Uh, provided, of course, in pulmonary atresia, for the pulmonary atresia to survive, you need a uh, connection between the right and left side. So either there is a VSD or ASD or both. So there you will not get failure. Uh, PD Eisenmenger newborn will never have Eisenmenger syndrome. Eisenmenger syndrome you develop later on, uh, later in childhood or maybe adult. Truncus is uh, <coughs> that is a that is uh, sort of single cavity, both uh, venous and arterial blood mixed together. So that admixture actually happens in three situations. One is single atrium, you will have cardiac failure. Next is single ventricle, again you will have. And the uh, last one would be truncus arteriosus, This is where the pulmonary and the aorta are, it is the same uh, vessel. So it is a admixture. Next, truncus is there. Differential cyanosis occurs in what? <coughs> Any answers? No. Uh, the answer is PD Eisenmenger. This is uh, uh, in PD Eisenmenger. Roshni, uh, previous question. Uh, previous question, please. A newborn with both congestive heart failure and cyanosis, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, truncus arteriosus is the answer. Because for the cardiac failure to occur, uh, you need... Okay. Uh, you, you understood why it is. Uh, suppose it is single atrium, you will, you will have cardiac failure. Suppose it is single ventricle, you will have cardiac failure. Suppose it, you have a single uh, outflow tract, that is both pulmonary and iota together, that is stronger. Again, you will have cardiac failure. Next, next question. Ah, differential cyanosis. See, <clears throat> lower limb will be cyanosed and upper limb not cyanosed in case of PDA Eisenmenger. So that is... Uh, Typical of uh, uh, PD Eisenmenger difference cyanosis. There is something called a reverse difference cyanosis, which means your upper limb is cyanosis and lower limb is uh, pink. You need not confuse it. That occurs, that is basically a postgraduate thing that occurs in TGA with uh, Eisenmenger. You, you just forget about it. Um, differential cyanosis classically occurs in PD Eisenmenger. Next. Right sided aortic arch that you will all be knowing, I think. Right sided aortic arch is in about 20 25 percent of tetralogy, you will have right sided aortic arch. Yes, next. I can't see properly my uh, myocardial infarction EC. Pattern in okay, okay. Uh, ECG in a child is showing myocardial infarction pattern. What are the possibilities? Correct. Kawasaki disease is correct. And uh, uh, usual uh, choice that is given is uh, uh, Al Kappa, anomalous left coronary arising from pulmonary. Uh, that is the usual choice given. Here it is uh, given as Kawasaki, correct. Kawasaki also can cause. Myocardial infarction. 
नेक्स्ट एसिमेट्रिक सेप्टल हाइपरट्रॉफी इज क्लासिकली डिस्क्राइब इन एनी आंसर्स हाइपरट्रॉफिक कार्डियो मायोपैथी हाइपरट्रॉफिक कार्डियो मायोपैथी अदर अदर फीचर्स वुड बी यू मस्ट हैव सीन पीपल डाइंग वाइल एक्सरसाइजिंग एंड ऑल नो दे मे बी हैविंग हाइपरट्रॉफिक कार्डियो मायोपैथी बिकॉज़ ड्यूरिंग एक्सरसाइज द एक्चुअल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन टू द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर आउटफ्लो further gets compromised so <clears throat> scm can cause sudden cardiac death it it has got uh, asymmetric septal hypertrophy and um, mm, what else hcm mm, okay next the congenital heart disease which does not require Infect the endocarditis. Say, so, infect the endocarditis prophylaxis is required in all heart diseases where the flow is uh, heavy, uh, where the pressure difference is not much. You possibly will not require prophylaxis because only when uh, flow is high, this uh, uh, jet will uh, uh, help the organism to remain on the side. so a second dam asd does not require infective endocarditis prophylax second dam asd primum asd will require why because primum asd in addition to asd is having either endocardial cushion defect or the uh, cleft of the mitral valve so that will require and after surgery also many uh, of the uh, heart diseases will require infective endocarditis prophylax for example asd uh if it is repaired with a patch then it will require uh, endocarditis prophylaxis uh, suppose pda is ligated then naturally there is no flow there that will not require uh, infective endocarditis prophylaxis after ligation pda as such will require prophylaxis but after ligation it will not require so hope i am clear and not confused next a uh, functional closure of pd occurs by how many hours 12 hours <clears throat> the anatomical closure will will be around about 3 weeks but functionally it will be closed in 12 hours pd next next uh spontaneous closure is least common in the answer given b <coughs> no a is the correct answer because primum asd will never close on its own because it is not just asd it is a cushion defect it is a valve defect etc uh uh VSD is almost 70-80 percent will close, especially the perimembranous type. Perimembranous is otherwise called subbiotic. Second, the VSD, many of them will close. Okay, next slide. hypercalcemia and elfin facies is characterized by actually it is uh, this elfin facies once you see that description it is called williams syndrome it is in williams syndrome that this facies is described uh, those who uh, have not seen it uh, can just say, see my clinical uh, book the facies is there uh, the picture is there uh, it is uh, hypercalcemia is a feature of mm, b hypercalcemia and elfin facies are characteristically associated with yes correct supra valvular aortic stenosis which is uh, characterized characteristic of william syndrome and hypercalcemia is also a characteristic of william syndrome coagulation of aorta you all know it is turner syndrome rubella syndrome it produces pda and uh, 
the next common would be peripheral pulmonary stenosis pulmonary stenosis next common uh, allegheny syndrome is a syndrome where you have a, um, uh, obstruction to biliary flow so you have intensely pruritic you have a child with a sort of triangular facies that allegheny syndrome the usual heart disease is ps pulmonary stenosis next next slide the commonest tumor of the heart in children actually a is correct as a whole because myxoma somebody has put in as a uh, if the question is uh, commonest tumor in the heart the answer is myxoma if they have specified it as commonest tumor the heart in child child then it is rhabdomyoma basically because it is a part uh, i mean associated with tuber tuberous sclerosis which is usually picked up in childhood so uh, both myxoma and rhabdomyoma are correct answer but um, he, since uh, the question says in children we will take b as the answer next the most common cause of hypertension in children <clears throat> any answers correct sajin it is uh, e because the most common cause of, because we have seen hypertension in children in during our clinical posting only in nephritis so naturally it has got to be the commonest one A essential hypertension occasionally you can see in children chronic renal failure definitely will have hypertension but it is not a common uh, thing in children pheochromocytoma definitely has got hypertension in fact it is the one that is having a maximum hypertension but it is rare not common again coact has got hypertension and you may have a difference between uh, upper limb and lower limb bp uh, but again not a common thing. next regarding poison oh regarding poisoning in children which of the following statement is not correct okay mm. ah you are any any answer okay uh, ethylene glycol is uh, something that you see in our um, uh, uh, car no car uh, you have that coolant uh, that uh, contains this ethylene glycol to some extent then of course uh it is uh, it definitely causes metabolic acidosis that is correct uh because it is um, it acts something like um, something like um, methyl alcohol something like not exactly so ethylene glycol produces severe metabolic acidosis theophylline uh, actually nowadays you see that um, uh theophylline like aminophylline or nerophylline is not much used in asthma basically because uh, it produces convulsion and the people go to court for compensation in fact it is a, although it is a very good drug it is notorious for having a, a cost a lot of financial damage to doctor so people are not prescribing theophylline nowadays so theophylline leads to convulsion is correct uh quinine leads to cardiac arrhythmia is again correct basically because uh, basically uh, if you recollect that uh, when you uh, give quinine you take a baseline ecg and then um, ecg monitor etc n acetyl cysteine is a treatment for paracetamol poisoning overdose and the paracetamol poisoning uh, initially there will be increased blood level and then after about 24 to 48 hours you have hepatic damage once hepatic damage comes then there is no point in giving um, n acetyl cysteine so here the answer is c n acetyl cysteine does not decrease mortality once hepatic encephalopathy sets in but uh, given early soon after poisoning it is life saving so answer is c next <clears throat> normal serum osmolarity any takers 
നോർമൽ സീറോ മോസ്മലിറ്റി ടു നയൻറ്റി സോ ഇഫ് യു ക്യാൻ ഹാവ് എ റേഞ്ച് സംവെയർ നിയർ ദാറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ ചൂസ് ദാറ്റ് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് നോട്ട് ഗോ അബൌ ത്രീ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സോ ടു എയ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് ടു നയൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ഇസ് അക്സെപ്റ്റബിൾ ടു സെവൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ടു എയ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് വെരി അക്സെപ്റ്റബിൾ ബിക്കോസ് വി എക്സ്പെക്ട് ഇറ്റ് ടു ബി നിയർ ടു നയൻറ്റി റാദർ ദാൻ നിയർ ടു എയ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് സോ വി വിൽ ടേക്ക് ദി ടു എയ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് ടു നയൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ആസ് ദി ആസ് ദി ആൻസർ ഇൻ ദിസ് ടെക്സ്റ്റ് uh cataract is possible in uh, which one of these any takers uh, sajin uh, uh rubella causes cataract in if if you get rubella as a fetus not uh, no even newborn getting uh, uh, rubella will not produce cataract uh, only in fetal life it will produce uh, cataract so rubella is wrong uh 10 year old child on topical steroid for past one year see a prolonged topical steroid will produce glaucoma not cataract what does cat uh, produce ca- what produces cataract systemic steroid for a longer period of time produces cataract so <coughs> since it uh, given it as uh, topical steroid will uh, we will not accept that answer glaucoma uh, is possible william syndrome uh, we said about uh, uh Uh, hypercalcemia hypercalcemia and supravalvular aortic stenosis uh, as uh, characteristics of william syndrome we said uh, but uh, it doesn't produce cataract of course hypercalcemia is there but it doesn't produce cataract myotonic dystrophy is uh, uh, something that is uh, known to produce uh, cataract next Uh, egg on side appearance uh, uh, in uh, which one tga correct and snowman is in snowman is in tapvc uh, total anomalous venous uh, connection the word e sign in x ray is in coagulation of aorta but the word <coughs> e sign doesn't appear in a small child it appears say about after 5 6 years only it appears so suppose uh, reverse suppose the, uh, they give the choice of reverse is sign in a in a 6 month old child don't take it as coact because it cannot be because it needs a lot of time for this to develop next slide please okay i think uh, uh, this is uh, all I, that i have prepared so after your uh, entrance you you can follow me in my youtube channel where uh, you will have a lot of useful things but possibly not useful for your entrance entrance i am not uh, discussing in my channel okay i will give one or two questions also uh, in a 3 year old child with bronchial asthma all the following are given except steroid sedatives theophylline terbutalin which one steroid sedatives theophylline terbutalin no actually theophylline is not an absolute no <clears throat> in a bronchial asthma patient you can give steroid you can give terbutalin in fact uh, severe uh, um, bronchial asthma patient will require iv terbutalin uh, um, then uh, steroid of course you give theophylin you give after as a second line when the first line fails magnesium sulfate also you give as the third line sedatives you should never never give because uh, you will have to assess whether he the child is or the adult is going in for hypoxia and when they are going in for hypoxia uh, then uh, you become uh, down and down sedated and sedated so we will have to uh, uh, detect it and uh, give support either way by way of oxygen or ventilation so you 
generally <coughs> do not give uh, sedation but uh, suppose the uh, choice is uh, ketamine instead of sedatives then ketamine actually sometimes we give because uh, this being although it is an anesthetic it's a slight bronchodilator also so in an agitated child agitation becomes an important uh, contributor to hypoxia so we you tend to give sedatives but sedatives may be counterproductive in that uh, situation we can consider uh, ketamine uh, now cotrimoxazole is a, a treatment of choice in the following conditions except pneumocystis carini prophylaxis in urinary infection pertussis community acquired pneumonia as per ari control program the cotrimoxazole is the treatment of choice in all except any idea <coughs> no community acquired pneumonia in the, in the uh, early recommendation cotrimoxazole was the uh, drug used so uh, yeah pertussis is the answer because pertussis you require macrolides not cotrimoxazole so macrolide is the uh, choice in case of uh, now drug of choice for a 7 year old well looking child with pneumonia well looking child with pneumonia and cough erythromycin cotrimoxazole tetracycline and penicillin which one 7 year old child well looking pneumonia with significant cough the uh, i'll put the question uh, in another way that is uh, as far as entrance is concerned the commonest cause of uh, pneumonia in a school age child is erythromycin correct commonest uh, cause of pneumonia in a school age child is mycoplasma at least as per textbook so for mycoplasma erythromycin is the drug of choice actually you can give um, tetracycline also but uh, since it is a child uh, when you uh, choose between tetracycline and erythromycin you give it yeah. so i think i'll uh, stop here wish you all the very all very best now the number of seats have actually increased a lot so you have all the probability of getting uh, uh, selected because uh, last time uh after so many rounds they they put up a, a, a additional round also where um, uh, so many people last time got in so there should be no problem uh, only thing is you may not be getting what you uh, actually would like to have that is the uh, only problem that you may be facing otherwise uh, seats are uh, so many so thank you thank you very much 